Hello, friends. Let's talk food production and food distribution by exploring two great uh, socially uh, impactful uh, data sets. We'll start by looking at the percentage of farming area dedicated to organic agriculture around the world. This is really cool. And we'll follow that with the location of farmers markets inside the United States. So food is a big deal, as you know. Uh, it can tell us a lot about who we are, about what we think about our health, the amount of money we're willing to spend on our diets, and how we support our local economy. So, you know, and probably a lot more. Uh, while we explore those data sets, I'll also show you a cool function using OpenStreetMap where you can give it a country name and get in return the geo coordinates, the latitude and longitude of that country. Really cool. And also, we're going to do some uh, fancy little uh, group buy tricks to do some EDA, some dirty EDA e exploratory data analysis to quickly get a feeling about the data. Uh, just very, very quick and dirty. So welcome to the Viral ML Show. My name is Manuel Amunatigi, the host, but also uh, you know the promoter of pushing ML to the web since 2013. I keep saying, you know, get your ML out to the web, get it out to the web, because it shouldn't be just restricted to people who know Jupyter Notebooks. You know Jupyter Notebooks, I know Jupyter Notebooks, but there's a lot of other people who don't know, and it's too bad because uh, it's restricting uh, them from accessing, you know, our great tools, our data analysis. Uh, if we wrap it around the web, everybody around the world, some 4 billion apparently have access to the internet, can access it and have their lives changed by the tools we've built. So definitely, uh, you know, start doing that or start thinking about doing this. Uh, the, the Sign up for my newsletter is right there in the middle of the page. Uh, you'll not only get access to my newsletter, uh, my deals, you'll also get access to free classes, including some on porting ML to the web. So I highly recommend you check it out. This video is going to be classified under data science. So it's the red button. You click there and you'll see all my other videos and the walkthroughs on data science. And uh, please give some videos some love. Give it some thumbs up, you know, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's always good to get feedback that people are liking it uh, and appreciating the material. So. Before we start, have you heard a term of food desert? It's not a misspelling. I didn't mean food des dessert, food desert. Um, There's a little cartoon here. Where is it? Uh, right here. So uh, in the United States, the United States government defines a food desert as a low income census tract where a substantial number or share of residents has, a has low access to supermarket or large grocery store. This is a big deal as it means that, you know, rural areas and poor urban areas don't have access to uh, fruits and vegetables. They're stuck with high calorie foods, fast food, right? Uh, and this is bad for their health. It not only can lead to diseases like diabetes, but those who have diseases can't manage it well because they can't have access to fresh, uh, you know, fresh produce because they're stuck with you know junk food and that's a big deal and uh, uh, it, it, you know it's, it's, it's a tough because big supermarkets don't want to open in poor neighborhoods because they don't think they're gonna be able to sell their stuff and maybe health stores uh, health food stores in in poorer neighborhoods can survive because people are not willing to pay that premium price and it's that's it's, it's tragic and hopefully the more we adopt organic food uh, the cheaper it's going to get and things are going really good uh, in terms of organic food we're going to have plenty more information about that in in this uh, in the walkthrough. By the way, there's code there. Everything you need is there. Uh, but we're going to be using a data set uh, by FIBLE, which stands for the uh, Research Institute of Organic Agriculture. And they are they did some said that some some uh, very interesting stats. They said the um, on a global level, the organic agriculture land area increased by 11.7 million hectares, or 20% more compared to 2016. So. Uh, it increased from 2015, from 2016 to 2017, increased 20%. It'd be really interesting to know the 2018 numbers, or the 2019 numbers when they're released, but it is increasing. And also farmers who produce organic uh, uh, produce uh, uh, make more than twice the amount of money than regular farmers. So we're going to look a little bit at what that means, um, you know, and... Um, and hopefully the prices of organic farming goes down so everybody can enjoy, you know, healthy, uh, healthy produce. Um, so... Uh, we, we're gonna go, we're gonna get the data from Fibble, F I B L, and the link is there. Uh, it's super easy to use. Just go to the link and you say take all the countries they have. You select them all. Go select all, and to the elements you can do uh, you know whichever you want. I went with organic area share of total farmland. I thought that was interesting. And the years I selected the latest year they have is 2017. They haven't released the, the later numbers yet. And then you simply um, do export to Excel file. And from there, I opened the Excel file, I copied it, and I dropped it in a uh, CSV. Uh, there's probably a way of doing it uh, using Excel automatically in Python. I didn't feel like dealing with it. I just wanted to get the data and quick and dirty. And that's what I did. So then I brought the, all that data into a file called global-organic-area-2017.csv. And it's a tab delimited. So you have to tell it that it's uh, separated by tab, not comma delimited, like a CSV normally would be. And I bring that in memory. When you load it, you'll see you have three columns, country, 
year in organic share area share of total farm farmland in percentage. You can see Afghanistan has zero and Albania has 0 0.05, etc. If you look at the number of countries that it returns, it returns 165 countries. Now we want to map this, right? And we're going to map. We're going to put bubble sizes using a base map map to see uh, the size of uh, of you know the, the percent they're using for agricultural farm farmland. Um, uh, sorry, organic farmland. Uh, the problem is we don't have a, 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 a geo coordinate, and we need we need a geo coordinate, right? So we have the country name, but we don't have the latitude and longitude of that country. So I found this really cool function on Stack Exchange uh, called get bounding box underscore country, and you pass it a country, and you can tell it you want a bounding box or do you want a centroid. We're going to go with the center. Central just takes a country and gives you the center, as its name implies, versus the bounding box will give you multiple uh, lat latitude and longitude, so you can more or less see where it's at. Uh, that could be very useful if you're trying to draw, uh, you know, draw countries or, so or stuff like that. I did not play with that, but the key here, the engine really is calling this uh, URL, the open map, openstreetmap.org, give it a country, and it's going to return all that information. So. Uh, so that's going to allow us then to, and this is what we're going to do. We are going to loop through each country uh, one by one, take the country name, and then we're going to call, we're going to create a request, uh, the get bounding box function, pass it the country. And in this case, we say we want cent centroid. We don't want the bounding box centroid. And what it does, it, it brings it to this function, the function I copied. Uh, it creates the request, the actual URL request. It passes it three values, including the country name. It calls a request, and if it gets it, depending on you want a bounding box or the centroid, we want the centroid. It's going to pull that that from the JSON from the return and return it as a you know as a list. Um, and then we are simply you know on my on our end we are saying did we get the value? Yes, no. Uh, we we first assign a centroid to none because here you're going to be passing a country name and hoping that OpenStreetMap has the equivalent. If it doesn't, it's going to return none, and you're going to see there are some cases there we can't find a match because uh, even though the, some countries, most countries are universally spelled the same way, some aren't. Uh, so that's why you know if there is no centroid, it's going to fail. There'll be uh, an exception, and we're simply going to still uh, append a a a, um, a longitudinal latitude, even if it's just a none, because then we want these lists to be exactly the same amount of rows as a data set, because we're simply going to slap them back to the data set. We run this, and as you can see, it's going to go through 165 countries, and there's a modulus, so it's, you're going to have a print of the countries every 10. It's going to print it out, so 165, 155, and here it didn't find Bolivia because uh, I think it's spelled Bolivia, but in um, uh, in our data set, it's spelled Bolivia and you know state of blah blah blah, right? So some some of these, some of these have slight variations, and it's okay if you really wanted to uh, recoup all these names. Only there's less than 10. Uh, you could go, you, you know, you could do it, and um, and, and, you know, quick and dirty, we're not going to bother with it. We're simply going to ignore them. And you can see there's only a few. And then we have all that done. I'm not going to run that again because it takes a little while because it's basically doing 165 calls to the OpenStreetMap server. Uh, but we can do this part afterwards. Now we got the data. We are going to create a new column to our organic data frame by adding the longitude by slapping the, the longitude list that we just recuperated and the latitude list and uh, dropping all the NAs, right? Because these are going to be NAs. Philippines, Puerto Rico, I didn't find matches. Uh, Reunion, France, didn't find matches. So we're going to drop them. And now, if we, uh, here, let's just, just see what we have while we're here. We're going to do a head. So now, as you can see, we have what we had before, but we also have a longitude and latitude. So we are definitely progressing. Um, and now we are going to um, we're going to sort the values to start to do a little little peek at the data, and we're going to see which is the one that has the most uh, the highest percentage uh, dedicated to organic farming. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And it's interesting to see, right? We have Liechtenstein, Austria, Estonia, Sweden, uh, Sao Tome, Italy, Latvia, Switzerland, right? So we have a lot of these, let's say, smaller countries that have a higher percentage of organic farming. Uh, but if you look at the list, I think I have a list somewhere here. The four countries that produces the most food, right? And you can imagine who they are. They're China, India, United States, and Brazil. So those countries are not going to make it on the top of the list because, uh, you know, it's just they're, they're such huge producers of food that they can't, you know, they're the ones practically, you know, feeding the world with the food. They can't, it's just a lot easier for smaller countries to have a show up as a higher percentage of um, uh, organic food than it is for larger countries. It is changing, but it's going to take a long time to change because at the same time, uh, you know, some people say that organic farming is kind of restricting the the amount of food that can be made. Uh, we just need to find better ways of doing organic farming so we can feed everybody. But this is interesting. So now we have, right, the country, 
the year, uh, the area, and we have the longitude and latitude. What are we going to do? Well, one last thing to do is to map it. So we're going to use base maps. I've used base maps in a lot of my previous videos. You may have to install a few things to get base map. It works with uh, Map.lib, but you have to install a few things. So, and this is the, the, the instructions and the pip install to get it done. And of course, you've got to bring a map plot. You create your plot. And this was, this is what the beauty of base map is. It allows you to create these beautiful maps of the world with the outline of the world. So that's what you say. You want the, this is what you want. You give it the dimension of what you want, and it's going to take care of everything else by giving you the correct backgrounds and everything. So then you uh, pass it the, um, in this case, you're going to pass it, it's called, uh, what do we call this? Uh, the organic area, right? We're going to give this, we are going to give it, no, sorry, we're going to give it the uh, uh, country name. So this is going to, we're going to, it's going to create uh, the, the labels for each country. And uh, then we're going to do a scatter plot where we're going to give the longitude and latitude uh, each point, so you know, almost 165, we have less because we have some nulls, and we are going to give it also as the S value, we're going to give it the size of, uh, you know, the, the percentage size to dedicate it to organic farming, and we're going to multiply that by 10, just to make it a little bit bigger, so you can make it bubbles bigger or smaller, uh, it's all relative to each other, so it doesn't really matter, just to help you see what you, just, just to help you see it, and we're going to add a title to the piece, so let me draw this. Takes a little while, it's going through 165 countries. Yeah, second time, second time's a charm. So as you can see, right, it's interesting to see like China, very small dots, United States, very small dot, Brazil, very small dots, that right, India, very small dot. It's and these are the biggest producers of food, right? But the large ones are, for example, look at it, all throughout Europe or even Australia because they are smaller uh, producers. And also, I think Europe takes uh, uh, organic, you know, organic food production very seriously. There's a huge demand for it. Thus, you're going to see that. So, if you want to play around with the size for analysis, we could do like, for example, time it by a hundred. And basically, you're going to zoom in. You're going to see your bubbles as bigger. Right there, you start seeing a little bit more who's the high producer of farmlands. Okay, so this is what I want to show. Hopefully, uh, this will trigger some interesting ideas so that you can go and create, uh, you know, maybe even look at individual countries or uh, start seeing about where there's opportunity missing uh, or where, where, you know, there should be more organic farming than there is currently. All those things, you know, hopefully that triggers. This is what, is, this is what looking at these data sets is all about. Let's move to farmer's market. So this is a great data set I found on um, here on data.gov. Great information there, a lot of all sorts of data sets. And this one is called the Farmer's Markets Directory and Geog Geography Data, and you can download the entire data set. And it was actually updated very recently, you know, maybe less than six months ago. Actually, you know, right about six months ago. So um, I'm gonna run this. I have brought the data set, I downloaded it, and it's gonna download this Farmer's Market Directory and Geography Geographic Data, CSV. And if we look at it, if we take a peek at what's inside, You'll see you have an ID, the, the market name, and all sorts of information, website, blah, blah, blah. And we don't see that, but somewhere here, there is a latitude and longitude. Uh, we don't see it here. Oh, actually, I'm looking, I'm doing a list on the, the data, and this is what we want. We want, there's a lot of great information. It tells you exactly the type of food that these farmers markets are, are selling, but you have the X and Y. The X and Y is the latitude and longitude, again, because we're doing mapping exercising here, that's what we want. And we're going to do something very similar, but instead of using base maps, we could, but this is just the United States. We're going to use a quick and dirty plot using matplotlib, which I've done in the past. So here we don't have to use base map. We just call matplotlib. Uh, we bring it in. I'm going to size it to a 16 by eight. It's perfect for Jupyter notebooks. I'm going to use the black background. I think it's cool and a white and uh, the, the dots will be white. And here it is, right? We're plotting this farmer's market, the latitude farmer's market, sorry, longitude first latitude uh, as a uh, the y-axis and the line sign uh, line style we want none but we want the marker to be a dot and the color white and we're going to title it us markets uh, longitude latitude and plot it and there it is right you can clearly see a beautiful map of the united states clearly showed and you can already see what's going on right here this is not as densely populated and that's part of the part of why you see less farmers markets here so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of cut this so we can focus just on the United States, just on the continent itself. So I, I'm just kind of doing some quick and dirty limiters. I'm going to take a subset of our data frame by, you know, by removing some of these areas the la by latitude and longitude. And same deal. And that's going to allow us to kind of zoom in to uh, the, the country itself, the continent itself. And you can see here, we clearly see 
a lot more concentration on the East Coast. It's also a lot more populated. And also here on the uh, West Coast, a lot less here, which is strange because there's a lot of farmlands here, just not much farmer's market. And you ha usually a farmer's market works if, if you have a big town with a lot of people. And that's why it's very popular here uh, on the East Coast. So one quick thing I wanted to do, quick and dirty, is how can we, uh, uh, you know, if you look at this, how could you quickly do uh, some analysis to get some intelligence about where are the areas which have a lot and don't have? There's many ways of slicing and dices. So I thought about kind of aggregating everything by, uh, you know, by the, the latitude, basically getting one aggregation, a total count by each point on latitude, and then drawing some kind of histogram. And I think this is what I'm doing here. Uh, I am going to take take a, a the temporary uh, data set just using the, the latitude. I'm sorry, the longitude. I'm going to ignore the latitude because we're going to aggregate everything down and the ID of the farmer's market. I'm going to round it. I'm going to remove everything in the lat in the longitude. Uh, I don't want anything after the decimal point because that's going to allow us to create these buckets. And then we're going to do the group by. Group by this rounded uh, latitude, a count of how many IDs we have. And that's going to give us, so remember we have, what's the size of a data set here? Um, am I doing that anywhere? No. So let's do, let's do quick, let's do how much, how many, uh, how much data points do we have? Let's do a shape. So we have 8,790 data points. Once we run this through our, uh, you know, through our new f new sets of longitudes with aggregates, basically counts of how many uh, how many f uh, farmers market there are at that simplified at that rounded uh, longitude, we now only have 58 points. So if we drastically uh, reduced it, and if we take a peek at it, right, we now have points counts for each of the the integer right the 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 the, the, the rounded uh, longitude and we're going to do the same thing then we're going to plot this right same deal same we're going to we're going to uh, uh, create a a, um, a plot of a certain size uh, we're going to do on the um, the x axis the uh, our simplified longitude our rounded longitude and on the y axis we're going to put the counts and that's it right and let's see what it looks like and look at that Look at this. Very interesting. We clearly see, right? So this is a representation of this, but as a quick and dirty count, because you know you, it does make sense by you know, simplifying by longitude. You clearly see, right, the bulk of the farmers' markets are in, you know, from you know mid uh, the mid east to the east coast of the United States, and everything else is a little bit underserved. Uh, and there's definitely the peak here for you know the the, the west coast. Let's say. Uh, uh, California, uh, Oregon, and uh, Washington, right? And I, I added a map here I took from Wikipedia just to kind of see, uh, like, there's clearly some areas here, uh, parts of New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Wyoming. So these are huge. There's a lot of national parks. There's a lot of, it's not it's sparsely populated, but it's also big farmlands, and apparently they don't have many um uh, farmers market it will be interesting to compare. Is it is this do uh, that these 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 this kind of this kind of group this area doesn't like uh, farmers market or there's just not enough people uh, to do farmers market. This would be actually easy to do. Just get the populations of each states and corroborate that. Right? Do do the ratio with the amounts, the counts of um, uh, of uh, uh, farmers markets. Right? It would be very easy to do. Okay, that's the two data sets I want to show. Right? Two great data sets: farmers market in the United States and percentage uh, of of worldwide farming dedicated to uh, organic agriculture. I hope this triggers some interesting ideas. As usual, at the end of my videos, I like to plug uh, my uh, some of my material, uh, and I'm gonna again talk. About about the school, the Viralmel school, just go to viralmel.com, hit the school button, the orange button here, and scroll down and you have three tracks. You have the machine learning track, uh, the market analysis track, and the entrepreneur track, and they're all interesting. I recommend them all. If you like them all, you can get super bundled back pack where you get a deal and get you can buy all of them. The machine learning track has a free class. You simply go to it, and the first course out of the three courses uh, is about a uh, porting a uh, machine learning stock market application to the web. It's free. So we need to sign up. Even if you're already on my, on my newsletter, sign up, and you'll and I'll, it automatically sends you all the information, the classes, the ebook for this. And if you like it, then you can move on to the course two and three. And same thing with um, my other my other class, market analysis. If you're interested in looking at fundamental market analysis, um, you know through through finance. 
you can learn a lot about the world through uh you know through um the the financial indicators same thing the first course is free simply sign up and this this will automatically send you all the information you need uh for the rest of the classes and my latest my, my latest class is the entrepreneur track uh where you, we build all sorts of products including we create from start to finish a, uh, a web application that works on the phone i don't have it i normally have it i don't have it here but basically it looks like this and it's the quote Quote, it's a quote machine, and it looks just like an application you get from the Google Store, the, the Apple Play Store. Uh, it looks just like that, except it's fully a web application. It's just designed for mobile. It's built mobile first, and it looks great. And hopefully, it will give you ideas of how to use. You can also use your Python, use Flask, all the tools we use here, and design for the mobile phone, and create great tools that you can share with the world using, you know, hopefully uh, socially impactful data sets where you can, you know, uh, help people who don't have access to this information normally. Have have access and you know be, you know have access to organic food have access to weather information you know you know uh, better communication whatever whatever it is uh, you know hopefully that will inspire you to go out and build these kind of things thanks for watching